So this is, without a doubt, my Axpona 2024 show report. It was a really big show. Huge. So big, I, I mean, if I saw half of it, I'd be surprised. I did my best. But it was a fun show. Three days of music and fun and gear. I had the best time. I'm not kidding. And the other thing is meeting the people in the business that I've known for decades, meeting you guys in the halls, having great chats, taking selfies. <laughs> it was fantastic. And cherry on top, Herb and I did a seminar, just me and Herb, in front of a few hundred people. And we, we made a video of that. That's coming up in a few days. But for now, let's just get to the gear itself. My first stop was TAD to check out the Grand Evolution 1. Now this is a three-way floor standing speaker with a five and a half inch concentric driver with a beryllium tweeter and two seven inch woofers. Now the cabinetry is beyond stunning. <laughs> and you know what? So is the sound. This speaker sells for $65,000 a pair, but if you got the change, this is, this is definitely worth considering. Now, to bring things back down to earth, <laughs> I went to the MoFi room to check out the new Source Point 888. This is an Andrew Jones design with an 8-inch concentric driver and then two 8-inch woofers. Wow! And this one, by the way, is $5,000. Then I moved on to the Heaven 11 Pure Audio Project Room. Now there, I spotted the Billy Integrated Amp, which I actually re reviewed on this channel. It's a terrific hybrid amp. But Pure Audio Project was showing an all-new speaker, the Trio 10, that features a Heil AMT folded ribbon tweeter. And I actually have this speaker right now at home to do a full review on, so you'll be hearing more about this one soon. This is a full dipole design, and by the way, the price is $6,000 a pair. The Billy, by the way, is around $2,000. The Garrard 301 Classic Turntable, basically, it stopped me in my tracks. It's so beautiful. It has a solid walnut plinth. If this is a rim drive turntable, by the way, with a cast, a die cast chassis, and the tone arm was by SME. And I just think it's so, well, it's iconic. It's, it's, what, it's the beginning of audiophile turntables. And now it's back one more time. Speaking of turntables, I went to the Zesto room. Now, Zesto makes uh, tube electronics, and I've been admiring them for years. And I'm looking at their all new phono preamp. Now, I'm very likely to get this one in for review. It's, they only make tube electronics, by the way. And uh, this one seems very promising and it is the most affordable phono preamp they've ever made. You guys know that I'm into omnidirectional speakers and this company, Philips Design, uh, they have this speaker that's at least new to me. Uh, it was sounding fantastic in the way omnidirectional speakers can. And uh, they are, by the way, based in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Now, I have a thing about big speakers because big speakers sound, well, more lifelike. And uh, this new uh, Gobel Divin Nobelese uh, proves that size really does matter. It is huge. Each one weighs 570 pounds. <laughs> and Gobel, by the way, is a German company. And the sound was big luscious, detailed, clear, and life-size. Clayton Shaw's new open baffle speaker sounds, well, yes, extremely open, very fast, very clean, very spacious, and the best part is it is the least expensive open baffle speaker I know of. It's $3,000 a pair. Uh, the baffle is an inch and a half thick solid wood, not MDF. Speakers were being driven by the new atmosphere Class D amplifier. That's interesting because Atmosphere is a tube company, but this is their first solid state. And speaking of tubes, Linear Tube Audio has a new DAC. It's called the Arrow, and I'm definitely getting that in for review. So anyway, good stuff in this room. Then I moved on to Yamaha. Now, of course, Yamaha was showing their new stuff, but to tell you the truth, I was more interested in their vintage gear, like this receiver, absolutely gorgeous. 
The Yamaha NS10 speaker, the stand mount speaker, which was made from 1978 to 1993, and then I spotted the NS1000. This is an audiophile dream speaker, also from the 70s and 80s, I believe. And I lusted after the speaker for years, way out of my price range. But anyway, definitely <laughs> stopped me in my tracks yet again. Next up was Audio Note. And I gotta say, I expect a lot from this company, and they never let me down. <laughs> now, Audio Note, if you don't know, is a UK based company. They make complete systems, turntables, arms, cartridges, the cables, speakers, electronics, everything. Everything is made by Audio Note, and this sound is, well, it just totally sucks you in. They were playing some orchestral piece, and it sounded big and alive and powerful. Really amazing stuff. Treehouse, they make open baffle speakers in Southport, Connecticut, and uh, they also make all the electronics that go along with the system. These speakers were being triamped, and the sound is, uh, let's just say, mind-expanding in its presentation. PMC is known probably best for their transmission line speakers. Here's, a, here's what it looks like on the inside. Uh, and these speakers are big on clarity and also big on bottom end if I'm not a very large speaker. I was definitely floored by what I was hearing from these speakers. Maybe. I'm going to try to get these in for review. And speaking of uh, diminutive speakers that can sound really big, the PS Audio stand mount speaker, this is, I think, their newest speaker in the line. Uh, and yes, I was asking, is there a subwoofer on? No, the sub, the, all the bass was coming from these pretty small speakers. And uh, yeah, I might try to get these in for review. My next stop on the tour was the Convergent Audio Technology Room to check out Ken Stevens' latest designs. He designs two preamplifiers and power amplifiers. And he was partnering with Clarisys Audio. Those, those are the panel speakers there. And this is a big room. I gotta say the sound was definitely filling the room. It was huge. And I had a nice chat with Ken. This next one is a new name to me, Stratton Acoustics. Now these are very large speakers, but they are designed for a near wall placement, which is unusual. Most audiophile speakers like to be further out. These sound absolutely big, filling this huge room, very dynamic, almost like horn-like dynamics. There's two models of speakers there. And yes, I never heard of this company before, but I'd say they're off to a great start. I know that amp and sounds tube electronics are amazing, but now they also make speakers like this three-way horn speaker, which was sounding big, very dynamic, and unhorny in that it imaged really well and tone, the tonal balance was extraordinary. So yes, I'm definitely looking forward to more from amp and sound. <laughs> Devore Fidelity speakers are made not far from where I stand here in Brooklyn and have been for a very long time, I guess 20 years. And anyway, they were sounding great, but this time they were being driven by the new Camaro amplifier. And there's, there's Camaro himself, and uh, they're making those amplifiers here in Brooklyn as well, actually in the Devore factory. It's a 300B design. The Avant Guard Room look great, and uh, they had this new speaker, the Mezzo G3, but the room was uh, too small for the speakers, but they definitely show great promise. You guys know that I'm a big fan of MagnaPan. This is their new 2.7 platter magnetic speaker, and they were teaming up with Rogue Audio, Tube Electronics, and the room was sounding good, but yes, another one. Yes, the room was too small, much too small for these speakers to really show what they can do. But I hope to be reviewing a new MagnaPan soon. Maybe not this one, not the 2.7. I think it's going to be the 0.7X is the one I will get in a month or two. Dyn Audio had no problem with the room. This was a huge room, and they had their flagship speaker there, the Confidence 60. Those are $50,000 a pair made in Denmark, and the sound was life-size, dynamic, joyous. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for, joyous. These speakers could really belt it out 
clarity, dynamics, scale, power. Yes, this was the one. And this is, this is the show report. But now I'm going to show you, in some ways, the best part of the show report, my selfies that I took with people in the biz, and I will identify them, and also fans of the channel. And it was such a pleasure meeting you guys and taking selfies. I've never done this before, but I was having a blast doing it. If you dig the channel, please consider joining my Patreon to do so. Super easy to do. Uh, the address is on the screen right now. So, And of course, if you really dig the show, please consider joining my Patreon to do so. Super easy to do. The address is on the screen right now. You could join for a month or two and then split, or you could stick around for years as some of my patrons have done. The top rate is uh, 50 or or $100 a month, and at those rates, you and I will have a conversation every month at the beginning of the month. And with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you so much for watching, and I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.